guys, welcome to the Touchdown Table. I'm Ryan, that's Tyler, that's Jordan. In this video, we're going to be talking about some quarterbacks, and all of us, well, excuse me, most of us know who the number one quarterback in this class is, Joe Burrow. Some of us, M MJD, feel a little differently, but there's a lot of debate about who QB2 is in this draft class, and that's what we're going to break down today. We've narrowed it down to three guys, Tua Tungabailoa, Justin Herbert, and Jordan Love. Let's break it down. All right, so I'll start over here. I'll just uh, go over what is usually the general thinking. Most people have to have ranked over Herbert and Love, and most people would have Herbert at uh, over Tua and then Love at the end. Uh, people have their preferences on all of these things, so it changes depending on the person. That is the normal one that you'll see in most mock drafts, and that's most professionals and even non-professionals uh, thinking. So that's kind of the general order. It goes to a Herbert and Love, but all those guys could co be competing to go as a second quarterback based on how, what teams have certain ranks on them. So we're going to discuss that in today's video. Uh, you guys, go ahead. I feel like the reason why um, I wanted to make this video was because now as we get closer to the draft, and it starts to make sense why people are starting to think that Justin Herbert might be a better quarterback than Tua Tungavailoa. And I think it starts off, obviously, with the health. You don't want to be the Dolphins at five when the Chargers are behind you and you have the chance to pick the next back quarterback, and then you pick a guy that can't even play and take that risk. It's very risky, which is why I wouldn't be shocked to see Justin Herbert go before Tua in the draft, and not necessarily saying that he's a better quarterback, we're going to get to that later, which actually I do think he is, but I could see it happening. Yeah, and this obviously unique situation we're in this draft cycle, I do think it hurts Tua because he doesn't have a chance to, you know, have a pro day or meet with teams in person or let, or, you yeah. know, get, um, you know, medical checks as easily. So it definitely does hurt him because he was already a big question mark and everyone knew taking would be a big risk. But now it's even a bigger risk because we haven't seen him through the pre-draft process. You know, I don't know if any of you follow him on Instagram, but, you know, he's been oh, yeah. posting a lot. He's been At Tua, man. Story the other day. So, I, yeah, I had Tua, man. I think he's trying to, you know, kind of make his Instagram his kind of virtual pro day because he posted a yeah. video of him throwing and dropping back a while back. So he's trying to tell teams that he's ready. He did say um, something like, if there was a game today, I'd be 100% ready. Obviously, there's not a game today, so obviously, I'm not calling him a liar, but we really don't know if that's true because there's no game today. But it's just a unique situation, and even, like you said, you just take what you see on what you saw on the field last college football season, take that off the table. Just the fact that Tua hasn't had a chance to prove he's 100% on the field, it's going to hurt him in this unique situation. The exact quote from Tua is, I'd say I'm 100% right now. Uh, I'm ready to go play. It's been months too long. And then, uh, that's another quote. But, yeah, so that's uh, the exact quote point, that yeah. Ryan was talking about. Yeah, and also Trent Dilfer, who is his quarterback's coach uh, for the offseason right now, like just training him. Obviously, he's going to say the same thing as well, but he says he likes everything he's seeing from Tua. Um, he's maturing through this, and he said he was shocked to see how fast Tua is recovering. But a hip injury is a serious thing. But let's stop talking about injuries now and start talking about play itself. Who wants to start us off with that? No one does. Okay, I'll start you off. Alright, go ahead. I'll start off with that. I'm going to start with talking about Tua in comparison to Justin Herbert. We will talk about Jordan Love towards the end of the video because we he felt like he deserved to get his name thrown in there. So, the main thing you see with Tua is the quick routes and the decision making with that. And the main thing you see with Justin Herbert is the arm strength and his ability to just rocket balls downfield. It's they both have incredible talent, but they're very different quarterbacks. That's that's very true, and they they do have unique skill sets, as you said. You know, you look at Tua, you look at the quick feet, the mobility, the throwing motion, the way he's just um, able to kind of keep plays alive. But then you look at Herbert, you see more of a guy who. He still scrambles a fair amount, but he's more of a pocket passer. You know, the good arm strength, the size, the toughness, the mobility. Um, lots of starting experience in um, Oregon, as Tua has some starting experience, just not as much as he had to wait his turn a little while longer. You know, and, and, and Herbert, really, his best trait is his arm strength. And Tua, it might, it might be the accuracy and the touch on his throws. Yeah. They have different things that they each do good. So it's just going to come down to the injury factor. But as far as play is concerned, just kind of what type of guy are you looking for? What type of guy do you think will be good in the NFL style of play? 
Yeah, I think you broke that down really well between the two guys. I actually didn't have had time to go back, or, and to not go back, but to go and watch Herbert and Love, actually. So that's You've why I'm, I'm staying quiet over here. Um, <laughs> I'm watching the next as Tyler's trying to make fun of me. I'm watching stuff, so try not to. Also, Ryan, I know you got to kick out of that because you love when I say it. But I haven't watched people yet. Yeah. You love that I announced it to everyone. Because i got to state my credibility. But I have watched to it, and I like what I've seen from him. Um, so, Ryan, you broke it down really well from what I know. And they're just two distinct quarterbacks. So, it's basically what, whoever gets the first pick after the Bengals, most likely not the Redskins. Whoever gets either trades up to that third pick to the Lions, it's preference for them a point between two different quarterbacks on which one that they could want, but Ryan, you broke it down very well. Uh, I'm going to go back to a point that I made earlier, talking about in the draft, whether or not who you believe is better, uh, but the chance that Justin Herbert can shock the world, in quotes, um, because it might not be as shocking if it actually does happen and go before Tua. With the injury stuff, like we talked about, do the Dolphins want to take the chance on him? Not knowing what it's like, you go back a year ago just from now and it seems like that's already locked in for them a year later zoom into the present it doesn't look the same and ryan you said it with the whole situation going on in the world right now it's tough for tua to get his name out there and show teams but unless the dolphins have a have had a love for tua for a while which i think they might have going back to last year i don't think it's a lock to say that tua goes to the dolphins at five I don't think it's anything close to a lock. And I, I've seen reports that Miami does like Herbert, and some say that, you know, maybe Herbert just has more supporters, and that's all of his front office. You know, obviously, the front office won't be able to be all together on draft day. So this could really come down to the wire. I truthfully think it's almost 50 50 because, you know, you know, I'm a big fan of Justin Herbert, not as big of a fan as MJD, but I'm a big fan of <laughs> Justin Herbert, and he is my QB too. But I, I really would put the odds about 50 50. Uh, between Herbert to uh, which quarterback is taken first. That's just the way I'm interpreting the situation right now. Well, I don't know if you can say that's completely true, because if you're the Dolphins and you're putting 50-50 on them, say, you know what, uh, we'll just gr say, grab one. No, you got to have someone. I feel like right now at this point in time with the draft coming up, you have to know which one you have ranked above. It's not 50-50. They have a preference. They know well, who, if they're both there, they're going to take that guy. They know. Uh, and I get what point you were trying to say, but... I think they have a preference on one. It's not as much 50-50. I think that they... I don't think the Dolphins right now know who they're picking if they have the I second option at the quarterback oh, position. No doubt. I and, think they do. And what I, what I meant by that, I, I'm not saying the Dolphins are literally going to flip a coin and decide who they're going to pick. I meant that I think it's 50-50 odds out of which quarterback ends up going first. Yeah. But Brian Flores don't and decide... It, it might not even fun. be the Dolphins. Maybe the Chargers trade up and take the That's guy they want. So. Just, yeah. I think both of those teams yeah, know which guy they want. Detroit trade down already for, for the sake of all mock drafts. <laughs> yeah, come on. Let's go, Detroit. Um, uh, something, go. A point that I wanted to make is I'm going back to the injuries with Tua because I just thought of something it's important, that was so. interesting to bring up again. Uh, so you remember last year with Nick Bosa, there was a problem with the injuries uh, up of Ohio State. He didn't play that whole year, decided not to go back to – he got a lot more rest than Tua did because he decided not to come back and play – but there were issues with his injuries, and look what he did last year. He had such a great rookie season, uh, not picked that one, picked that two by the 49ers. And then he just put up a great season despite the injury issues. He went out there and played. That's just an example of how you can overcome those odds. Uh, I think he did have a few tweaks throughout the season with injuries, but nothing too serious. So th there is the, the pressure of what if we get this guy and he continues to get injured, but there also is the case of what we saw with Nick Bosa. What if this guy is as good as he's ever been before? Uh, he comes out and he's, he's firing on all cylinders, playing his best football. There's always that option, too. So you just have to weigh those, those options. I think also you, I, you make the good point about the injury. But with Nick Bosa last year, it was just the one injury that kept him out the entire season. Tua has had history of injuries in different areas. It was the ankle and then the hip. The hip injury specifically the ankle wasn't as bad. He was back. There yeah, the hip, the hip injury. He had two ankle Perfect. injuries, so. Right. But the hip injury specifically is an injury that has taken NFL players out of their career before. I'm not saying that his career is over before it starts. I'm not saying it at all. Tua is my QB two, despite the injury, because of what I've seen on the field from him this year when he played and watching film from last year when he was the college football superstar. I think that's important to go back and watch as well. 
But even in more recency, it's made it a lot closer between these two, between Tua and Justin. But right now, Tua is just a little bit above based on what I've seen from his love for the sport, his accuracy, his timing. I'm not saying that Justin Herbert doesn't have those, but it's just just a little bit better, in my opinion. It's close, though. And another, another point I want to make. Yeah, for, one more please. thing. Go ahead. Another point I want to make for Tua, then you might vouch for uh, Justin the second. But I just want to say uh, that Tua has done it on more higher scales, I guess you could say. Uh, the biggest thing that Justin Herbert did was winning that Rose Bowl against Wisconsin, which, don't get me wrong, that's a big game. It's the Rose Bowl. It's a huge game, lot, a game that a lot of people watch. It was a close game well. where he led his team uh, to a victory. He, he played very well in that game. Uh, but Tua is a guy who's going out there. He came in a national championship after the ha- half and uh, came back with Alabama, brought him back. So he's done it in levels like that. He's been in big situations. Not saying that Herbert hasn't, but Tua just does have that experience a bit more in bigger situations. Uh, so if, I mean, depending, you could take that as a positive if you want. I think that it definitely is a positive. Yeah, and one more concern that I think NFL GMs and scouts have with Tua, other than the injuries, I think it's just the fact that they are worried that he could just be a product of Alabama's system. Yeah. You know, look at the receivers they have. It's just always being carried by Judy and Ruggs and Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle. That offensive line, that coaching staff with Nick Saban, one of the greatest college coaches ever. Well, you can make that um, statement for Joe Burrow, too. That's just one point that GMs are making. I'm not saying that I believe that. That's just what I think it's injuries and what I just mentioned. I think those are the two big things that NFL GMs are kind of thinking about when Tua comes to mind. Right. It's a good point when, when you, you say it, but also you think to what I said before with Joe Burrow. He's got great weapons around him. He's got Jefferson. He's got he's got Chase. He's got Marshall, which I actually think Marshall's pretty good. Edwards Elair, he had a pretty good offensive line. Uh, so I think when you're on a good team like that, you're right, there is that chance. Um, that's why I'm watching DeAndre Swift right now. I had my doubts. Just a little bit because that offensive line is just so good. Uh, yeah. So there, there is something to definitely factor in. I don't think it's going to be a huge issue with Tua Tango All right. And then lastly, let's touch on the other guy that we talked about, Jordan Love. Oh, yeah. His ceiling. <laughs> it's almost. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of he these definitely teams. definitely slipped. There was a one point of where he, like he was up in these talks. That's... And then he, he just, after free agency, uh, he just kind of fell. Well, out exactly. Of after free agency, all these teams. Picked quarterbacks, and I was saying it before free agency. One of these quarterbacks is not going to be in the first round. Right now, it's looking like it could be Jordan Love. But you see what he can do, and you go, wow, this is incredible. This is similar to what Patrick Mahomes is able to do. I'm not saying it's at that level. Please don't think I'm saying that because that's just not true. Uh, But then look at his floor, and you just go, why did you make that throw? Or why did you do that? Or What what color is his floor? What was all of that? Is well, it hardwood? No, it's that's a uh, word for how when he does bad stuff. So, so hardwood. Sure, hardwood <laughs> floor. We'll go. It's we'll go with floor. that. Hardwood, floor. not carpet. Yeah, and with love, I feel like what what makes him different from Herbert and Tua. He's not on the same tier as them. And if he goes in front of Herbert or Tua, I'm gonna be very upset because it just doesn't make sense. Because with Herbert and Tua, there's a lot of good and then some bad. But with Jordan Love, it feels like for every good thing he does, there's something bad. Like with Jordan Love, I look at him and, I don't know, I just can't figure the guy. It's like watching a (laughs) (laughs) yo-yo. You shouldn't have put it that way. Yeah. (laughs) And also also with uh, Jordan Love, it's hard to evaluate a little bit. We were talking about how teams like LSU and Alabama has such good weapons on that team. Well, (laughs) Jordan Love is the opposite. He's almost got no one, so it's such a hard evaluation. Because he's got nobody there to help him make big plays, so you don't see it as much with him. Uh, so it's a harder evaluation. But I got to shout out my guy, DJ J- Daniel Jeremiah. Yes. He did have uh, Jordan Love, not at the second quarterback position, but he did have him go in the first round, I believe it was, to the Packers. So I got to shout out Daniel Jeremiah whenever I can, because he is my man. These, these two know it, and maybe you guys know it too, so that's just my Daniel Jeremiah quote of the day, or fact of the day. Yeah, so those are the other three first-round talent prospects that we believe besides Joe Burrow. Well, we didn't talk about Ryan's guy, Jake Fromm, either. But... Uh, we're not talking about Jake <laughs> well, Fromm. We're trying to get a consensus here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, but we still don't really have a consensus. Ryan thinks Justin's better. I think Tua's better. Jordan still hasn't 
gotten to the point where you can make that decision. Soon. So, but it's probably in maybe three days. I'll, I'll get the uh, the battle is close between these two, and on April twenty third, it's going to be interesting to see who 23rd does third or fourth. Twenty third. Third. Yeah. Just one last day than I thought. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see who goes first and who ends up being the better quarterback. It seems like Joe Burrow's number one. So that was the premises of of us making this video. I hope you enjoyed what we did in that video. If you did, hit the like button. That video or this so video? This video. <laughs> Subscribe to our channel. Hit Please the notification subscribe. bell. Comment down below who you think is better because we really want to get a conversation going. See what you guys think. That would be really fun. Yep. And with that, we will see you guys later. See ya. See ya.